and the Very museum curious. in Drum Drumhella. There was a quite a large theropod. It was a bipedal dinosaur with yeah. uh, herbivorous type teeth. There was a very yeah. strange um, theropod dinosaur that was described that was herbivorous, and it had these great big sort of butt teeth like Bugs Bunny, mm. you know. And it was clearly a herbivorous theropod. Mm. We need strange. to tell the viewers, of course, what a theropod is, and they won't all know. It's uh, <laughs> it's the class of dinosaurs including T. Rex, which yeah. is why it's significant to find maybe a vegetarian relative of T. Rex. Mm. Yeah. And fruit bats have got horrific teeth, serrated edges on them, but mm. they're not uh, to eat meat, they're to eat fruit. There's a class of the famous piranhas, mm -hmm. look exactly like their uh, vicious counterparts that are completely vegetarian. So there are so many examples actually of creatures mm -hmm. that, that uh, we think of as vicious meat eaters that actually um, can eke out an existence quite happily on plants. Yeah. You mentioned uh, the... Um, the serrations in the plant-eating bats yeah. in their teeth and um, <coughs> I think T-Rex teeth have got serrations on them mm. as yes, well haven't they? they have. uh, some yeah. people suggested that maybe the T-Rex the teeth um, are serrated for the same reason as bats that they, they, they yeah. were chewing and cutting into mm. tough tough plants rather mm. than just um, animals. Yeah. It's an important point that, that, that we're mentioning which touches on what, what can be called theistic evolution because for me as a Christian believing that God made a very good world, mm. I wouldn't expect to find animals ripping each other apart. Not only does the Bible make it clear that they weren't anyway, because God gave um, the creatures and man only plants to eat, as yep. it says clearly yep. in Genesis 1, I think verse 27. Mm. But it doesn't fit with the, the type of God that we see no. saying things are very good. And so for the person who says God used evolution as I once did, you have this problem that God is actually presiding over a process operating over millions of years where he's creating uh, through a process of time creatures that are living and dying, ripping each other apart like those two dinosaurs that you showed mm -hmm. earlier fighting, you know, the mm -hmm. Protoceratops and the mm -hmm. Velociraptor. We see teeth marks in the fossil record on bones, we see cancers and we see all these horrible things we see today and if the fossil record is the remains of a process that led up to our existence then we've got God calling that very good because at the very end of Genesis 1 he says ev he looked at everything he's made and it's very good. So mm -hmm. if Genesis is a metaphor for those six days of creation is a metaphor for evolutionary processes over time all this death and, and suffering mm -hmm. on an enormous scale globally over millions of years God is calling very good. Mm -hmm. And that's a real problem for our concept then of mm -hmm. God. And the, the Bible is very clear that death came about because of sin not just spiritual separation from God but physical death as well for man and I believe everything over which had been given dominion. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, the animals were kind of caught mm -hmm. up when, when Adam fell, uh, when he rebelled against God. It was mm -hmm. as if he dragged the whole of the rest of the creation down with him. So the mm -hmm. plants were cursed, the animals were cursed, the very ground was cursed. Yeah. Even Adam were cursed. And the very themselves. fabric of the universe was um, disrupted yeah. by the, the whole uh, Adam's cosmos. disobedience. Yeah. The whole it cosmos talks about groans. a bondage to decay, doesn't yeah. it, that mm. Paul talks about yeah. in Romans 8. And of course, um, this is the foundation to the gospel. Yes. Yeah. Because w if, if we break the link between sin coming into the world and the origin of death, then of course, what does the cross mean? Why did Jesus Christ yeah. have to come and live a perfect life and yet go to the the cross and die the death that sinful people deserve, mm. shedding his blood. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. physical death, the shedding of blood is required for the forgiveness of sin because that was the curse upon sin. Christ bore the curse yeah. for us. Yeah. And of course yeah. Genesis says that God breathed life into man who he created out of clay. He didn't breathe his image into a pre-existing anthropoid ape. No, no that's it right. It was um, uh, specially created yeah. um, creation. Mm -hmm. Humanity, in other words, is not a modified animal mm -hmm. and, anim and humans are not equivalent to animals. Mm. No. Um, as far as the Bible is concerned, uh, humans are a totally, completely separate entity to animals. Mm -hmm. We actually ha are yeah. here to have dominion over and not to lord it over them in the sense mm -hmm. of doing whatever we want to but look after them. But we are different. We're not modified animals and mm -hmm. that totally um, mm -hmm. gives you a totally different picture of, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. um, sin and mm. I have sometimes heard uh, uh, someone who is a Christian and believes in evolution a theistic evolutionist say that when the Bible talks about Adam being made from the dust of the ground this is symbolic it just simply symbolizes that God was using something that already existed to form Adam's body and of course they have in mind that God was 
using the process of evolution yeah. to form some kind of ape man into which God breathed life. But then we read in Genesis 3 when Adam falls uh, uh, into sin and God places the curse on creation, what does God say? He says, from dust you were taken and to dust you'll return. Well, mm. that kind of completely blows that argument out of the water, really, so doesn't it? Because de-evolved into osteopathosine. Exactly. We, yeah. we literally return to the dust when we die. Mm. So that's the dust from which we were taken. And when the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 19 was asked about divorce, he says in verse 4, have you not read that he that made them at the beginning made them male and female? Mm -hmm. And for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and cleave mm -hmm. to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. He's quoting there from Genesis 1 and from Genesis 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. And another thing about theistic evolution is that you're, you've got a very low opinion of Scripture. Mm -hmm. You're not saying, my word is true from the beginning, like the mm -hmm. psalmist says. Uh, mm -hmm. You're saying, well, it's all a metaphor. Yeah. So theistic evolution. Did you want to say something else on that? Uh, I would only add that, uh, as well as the Lord Jesus Christ, it's very, very clear that uh, all of the New Testament writers yeah. believed and took Genesis at face value mm -hmm. as real mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, just let me read one verse from. This is Paul uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45. He says, "It is written." the first man, Adam, became a living being. Th and he's referring right back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, which we referred to where the Lord God formed mm -hmm. man from the dust of the ground. So he, Paul is taking that, that as real, literal history, mm -hmm. just as Jesus did, just as Peter yeah. did, as we read earlier yeah. Yeah. Uh, about the flood. And linking it to salvation there, because he says, as in Adam all die, even yeah. so in Christ shall all be made yeah. alive. Mm -hmm. One of the other theological problems, of course, with theistic evolution is that one of the arguments in favor of evolution is that uh, it happens by natural selection and we can go and observe that process happening today. Well, if that's true, what does the Bible mean when it says God completed his creation? Mm -hmm. He finished his creation and he rested from his work of creation. Mm. If evolution is still happening today and that's the process mm. God used, that mm. doesn't make any sense. And if we can begin to reinterpret a straightforward, simple word like finished, Mm. Well, then what about in the New Testament when Jesus on the cross said, it is finished? Yeah. God didn't use death to create. Otherwise, uh, we have a problem, for example, in that same chapter, 1 Corinthians 15, where David and I are both quoted from, because Jesus Christ, when he comes back, is going to destroy death as an enemy. This is yeah, the last enemy, enemy that will be destroyed mm -hmm. as death. Jesus will place yeah. it under his feet. He will be victorious over death. So God mm. isn't going to say death is a very good process for p part and parcel of evolution to create life in the Old Testament and then say death is an en enemy mm -hmm. in, the, in the new. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I, I guess we ought to say that just because we take that view, it doesn't mean we ignore the fragments of bones that people dig up, these so-called hominids or ape mm -hmm. men or missing links, whatever you want to call it. We, we, we face that evidence head on. We just don't mm -hmm. see it in the we same way. Yeah. We yeah. Well, we'll, we'll yeah. certainly yeah. come on to uh, uh, and the as evidence. As far as the theistic evolution is concerned, if the Lord did things through evolution, hid behind evolution so that we can't actually uh, see God's hand in it, mm. then this is um, at variance with what Paul says in, run in Romans 1.20 when he says the invisible things of him from the foundation of the world have been clearly seen in the things that he has made. Mm -hmm. so, so that we're without excuse. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. theistic evolution falls down on two counts. One is that the, the science of the matter shows that yeah, evolution did yeah. not happen. Mm -hmm. And the, the spiritual aspects of things is yeah. that it totally contradicts the Bible and has yeah. No, yeah. Uh, there's no meaning in, in the crucifixion and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we come on to the uh, human uh, fossils and ape fossils, um, Paul, you've just got this slide to show... Uh, uh, what we find in the fossil record compared to what we would predict or evolution will predict. Okay. And you've got this, um, this first slide yeah. here. Well, I don't want to dazzle people with graphs, but these, these are it's just quite two, simple, really, these are two yeah. very simple graphs yeah. that I just want to show. If evolution is true, life began from very simple beginnings formed in a primordial ocean billions of years ago, and then gradually it would have diversified and become more varied to produce different kind of body plans, body forms, basically different kinds of animals over time. So that's so what it means by phyla, the so different types of major groups of the animals. Basically the, the, the 
basically different kinds of ways that animal bodies are built. Like yeah. we, we have vertebrates, uh, there are arthropods and so on, echinoderms. They 